Glory to God, y'all. Glory to God. I feel the glory of God on you today. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit falling on you right now. I feel a blessing of God that's coming forth right now. And the Lord's saying to you, He said, Do not fret over the things of the past, saith the Lord of hosts, nor the things of the world or the cares of life. For nothing shall hold you down and nothing shall tie you to the face of this earth. But I, the Lord, this day shall live, deliver you out of the mouth of the lion and out of the mouth of the bear. I will lift you up today. I will anoint you, dear mothers, this day. I will bring you forth and bring to fruition the very desires and the intents of your heart. I know your intercessions before me. I know your thoughts and your desires of me, saith the Lord. And I know that you have sought me with all of your heart. And if you seek me with your whole heart, you shall find me. So open up your heart and open up, open up your eyes this day. Open up your mind this day. And let the King of glory come in and fill you with a fresh anointing. Fill you with a fresh fire this day. For this year shall be a year of great prominence, saith the Lord. I shall bring you forth and you shall prosper in many things. You shall turn your head to the left and you shall turn to the right. And everything that you reach your hand forward to do, he said, I will give it to you this year. So cast all thy cares before me this day, because I care for you. And I will lift you up this day, and I will restore back all that has been removed. I rebuild all the old ruins, all the ruined buildings, and all the old paths that have been destroyed. I will recreate, and I will create a bridge a gap between you and I. I will, I will fill that gap, saith the Lord, and I will draw you nigh to me as you draw as you, as, as you draw nigh to me. I will draw nigh to you, and I will bring your children up out of the darkness. I will lift them up out of the miry clay, and I will set them on the rock, saith the Lord, and they will they will turn their face toward me like in heaven like a flint. And they will never be moved from this day forward all the days of their lives. If you will trust me today and you will give them over to me, you will, get, you will make a contribution to me this day. I will open up the windows of heaven and I will pour out blessings on you. And in your house there will be joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. And nothing by no means will harm and come against you and your household all the days of the, your lives, if you will acknowledge me this day. For this is the word of the Lord today, and it shall go forth and not come back void. Even this day, saith the Lord of hosts. Glory to God. Somebody give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Somebody shout to the Lord with a voice of trying to say, why? Because I see something in my spirit today. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel, the first chapter. We're going to be talking about Hannah today. And it's called, My Contribution Unto the Lord. Well, I see something today. I see a year. It's 1 Samuel chapter 1. I see, I see a year of jubilee. I see a time where all bondage is being removed. You listen. The Bible says, Call upon the Lord. While he is near, call upon him while you can, ladies. And you see, there's a, there's 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 certain times in our lives that God is closer to us than we than when we first believed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, He says, "Do this, know the time, wake awake out of thy sleep, and know the time that it is high time that you wake up out of your sleep, y'all, and that your what that your salvation." Your original salvation, Donna, is closer to you than when you first believed. You say, what does that mean? I'm talking about the, an age of innocence where God removes all the predators. I don't know why God's telling me to say this, David, but he is. He removes, this is on Mother's Day, it's all a part of it. It's, I'm talking about a house where the Bible talks about that, 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 when, that when a woman sings, when she sings, her, her, her praise becomes a vine, a vine of, 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 of fragrance, of, a vine of glory, of prosperity that fills the house. Well, there's a time that's coming that your salvation is closer than when you first believed. It's an age of innocence where God removes all the predators in your life. When he removes the attacks of the flesh, 
I'm not just talking about the worldly attacks of the flesh, y'all. I'm talking about the attacks of the inner man, the inner flesh, the inner, the, the indwelling sinful nature of flesh is also put at bay and caused to be brought to, to do not. His, his, his voice is made void. His, his, his voice is made void and null. In other words, he's, God will silence your voice, the voice of the flesh through the Holy Spirit, so that it no longer has any power over you. And the power of the flesh and the corrupt the world, the cares of life, all the things of the world that are that are topsy turvy that because of what? Because of fallen man, all the what's the word, the perplexities of life and the cares of life that seem to come in and do what? And they the Bible says they come in and they choke out the and they choke out the word. God said, I'm going to remove that for you today. I'm going to remove everything from your life so that, that your whole house is filled with joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. And even the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the wickedness in high places, they will be put at bay. And the, and the, and the gates that Jesus' word will, will, will be fulfilled. The gates of hell will not be able to do what? Not be able to prevail against you. They won't be, won't be able to, no matter what it does, it cannot prevail. It cannot, why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You're finally going to get to a place where you're going to see, you're going to see all the prayer, the prayers of the saints, the prayers of the mothers. You're going to see them come to fruition. You're going to see God take and, and, and go backwards and, and, and because he's the same yesterday, today, forever, and he changes not. And he's going to restore back what's been destroyed and bring it all fresh and new. You're going to actually reach the stage, mothers, that, you, that you're going to come back to the original place of your salvation, what, what you did best. When you interceded for your home and you interceded for your children and you saw the innocence of the glory of God on them, it's going to return back to them. Return back to them full measure. God doesn't do it halfway, y'all. I'm just telling you what God's saying in my spirit. Back, you got to claim this. Full measure. I can hear some women listen to me right now on that video. Full measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over. God's going to give back. God's going to give back. And, 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 it's, and it's going to be worthwhile. It's going to be worth your seed what you have done in your life, the things that you've sown and that you have planted are going to be worthwhile because they're going to come forth. They're going to break forth in a harvest. The ground's going to yield its fruit, and the fruit tree's going to bear its fruit. It's, it's, the ground's going to yield its harvest, and the fruit trees are going to bear its fruit. Why? Because God has watched you. Because you have, you have abided in the holy hill. And it says in Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel, it's the 34th or 30, I think it's the 34th chapter. Ezekiel 34 talks about that, that the, that the rain, the latter rain, the former rain and the latter rains, they'll come when they're supposed to come. And they'll pour that, they'll shower that on you so that you can produce. Every time you're supposed to have favor and produce, you're going to produce. Why is that important? Because God has allowed, you're, all of you, most of you are listening to me today. God has allowed you to walk in the same steps. Many of you here today, from one time or another in your life, have walked in the same steps of, as Hannah. Where you've had to do without. Where it seemed like that the walls were like brass. The title of the message today is, is, is my, my contribution to the Lord. When, when you, every person wants to have a contribution. Let me read it first, and then I'll talk to you about this today. I want to talk to you about where God's taking you. What, I'm what are you trying to say? Why did God start with all that to begin with? Because I don't want you to give up. I want you to understand that, that God does not work on the same blessings. He does not work on the same rewards as the world does. It's, it's not that we're... <laughs> thank you, Holy Ghost. It's not that we're entitled... It's not that, that you come to God with such an arrogance, with such an astounding type of um, uh, presentation that, like you deserve when you come before God. No, you come before Him like, like you have always done because you have come before the Lord with meekness and lowliness of heart. And because you, re you realize 
that God is almighty, almighty. He is this glorious, holy, righteous God, and besides him there is no other. And you present yourself before him just like the cherubims and the seraphims do, and just like the four and twenty elders do. And they cry and they call it a holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and who is to come. For there is no one like you, and only you, God. You, in other words, you have a you have a, a reverential all day or a reverential respect of him. And you realize that only he deserves to be magnified. Only he deserves to be lifted up. And all you want is to be a part of what he's doing. All you want is, is men and women of God. I know this is Mother's Day, but I try to incorporate all of it in the day. That God, David, wants, that God, God wants a people that what? That, 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 are, that, are, that are coming before him in spirit and in truth. That they're laying down their lives, they're laying down their hearts, and they're laying down the world and cares of life. And the only thing that they want, the only thing that they desire is to acknowledge, to, to acknowledge and to lift him up. He said, if I be lifted up, what? I'll draw all men unto me. And then he said, when praise goes up, my presence comes down. God's looking for generations that only want his presence, that, that are willing to go all the way to the end, all the way to the end to what? Till they seek God with their whole heart till they what? Till they find him. That's why I'm all the way back around. Where he's, he's, the Bible says he's a very present help in a time of trouble. I'm coming here. I'm getting over here. I'm getting there. But what I want you to see is, is the Bible says call upon the Lord while he's what? While he's near. While you can. See, most people think that God's sitting on his hands waiting for some, waiting for you just to, with begging, bated breath, just to get near to you. Because he, he does want to be, he does want to commune, he does want to be close to you. But I promise you, he's not waiting. You've got you to gotta run to him. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And whosoever what? Whosoever will let me in, I'll come in. See, you've got to open the door. You've got to make an effort. You've got to draw nigh to him. You've got to lift him up. But you know what's, what, I, what you say? Why am I saying all this? Because here's a, because here's the year of Jubilee, y'all. Here is a year that God is releasing the bondage off of you, releasing the world and releasing the cares of life. And right now you have the greatest opportunity of intercession, of going and standing in the presence of God like you have never stood before before. And, er, and, 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 what, and, and everything you ask for, whatever you ask when you pray, it, it, you're going to receive it. It's going to come forth. God's going to, he's going to let it come forth and you like press down, shake together, running over. He's going, to, he's going to open up the windows of heaven. I'm just moving in my spirit right now. And he's, he's, he said, I'm just standing there waiting to pour out blessings on you that you cannot contain. And then what does it say? Whosoever will, let them come. And let him drink of the water of life. That means you got to come, Gina. you got to come in the presence. I don't know why God's doing this to me right now, but I'm just going to follow it. It has, no, it has everything but nothing to do with my serving. But I'm telling you that God is calling, the, he's calling women right now to the point of intercession that you will see the works of God come to fruition in your life. What's the most important thing in your life? outside of your own salvation to see your little ones come and be restored back into the kingdom of God I know this for a fact that the majority of Christian women today their children are running in the world and they're lost they're lost they're caught up in the ways of the world and the cares of life and they have they have they you know I was telling my wife the other day did you know this Donna did you know that in, in the Bible it talks about this that when old, and it's, you know, it's not the children's fault, it's the parents' fault. That, that, that when, when, when the people are, those who are told the word, David, they stop talking about God and they stop telling the story. Did you know that there will be generations that come up that the Bible says that they do not know who the Lord their God is? Even though they're raised by Christian parents, they do not know who God is. We're in that time and that generation right now. Gina, that's why what you were talking about Facebook earlier, that's why there's so much animosity. That's why there's so much hate and there's so much corruption and there's so much turmoil and turbulence and there's, and there's so much wickedness of man on the face of the world because the body of believers, women, mothers have stopped talking to their children about 
the glory of God and they do not know them and they, they do not know him. And the only thing they know to do is turn to the ways of the world and the ways of flesh because they are groping. They are groping in darkness right now. They are groping in the world of care life and they're just doing anything to try to fight their way out of what? Out of the, out of the uh, insecurity and the animosity that's going on on the inside of them. The destruction on the inside. And nobody, nobody can get, Jesus said, I give you my peace, didn't he? Not, you can get all the wealth of the world, all the cares of life and everything. I don't know why God's doing this, but I'm going to do it. All the things of the world, but none of it can bring you peace, can it, David? But until you find, that's what you said, Gene, a while ago. Until you find the glory of God on the inside. See, a lot of people think that when I start, when I come to know the Lord, that means I'm going to die. Yeah, you're going to die. You're going to die. This is, this is totally unlike any other Mother's Day service, isn't it? Yeah, you're going to die. You're going to die in your flesh. But you know what? Once you die in your flesh, you know what the, you know what the, you know what the, 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 inner, the indwelling sinful nature of man doesn't tell you, you know what, and you know what the Satan and the principalities don't tell you? Once you die to yourself, you are liberated from yourself. And now you have peace. Now you have joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. And all you need is a righteous person, a righteous man, a righteous woman in your life. All you need is somebody just to agree with you. And I can tell you right now, you can turn the world upside down. I'm telling you. And all God is, you know, what's God looking for? He's looking for mothers that are willing to stand up and stand against the darkness and make a contribution. That's what the title of the message is. I actually know what God's doing now. Make a contribution to this world and to their home and to their family of something that has value, something that will make a mark. That will, when, when, when they're done and they're gone in the end, it will stand the test of time. And it will show that they have actually, they have actually contributed to their house and contributed to this earth, and they have given something for everybody to 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 be encouraged by and lifted up by. That's why the Bible says, "Encourage one each other, one another, while it is today." And that's what this message is about: my contribution to the Lord. And I'm gonna, when I, by the time I get done with this, I'm going to wonder: Are you willing to? Would you, would, ladies, would you willing to be able to think? The way Hannah thinks in here. Would you be so willing to receive, to get what Hannah wanted from God that she was willing to, I'm, I'm, I almost gave my, my, I almost gave my point all the way back then. I'll, I'll hold it here in just a minute. But that willing to give that contribution that in the end, it all goes back to the Lord. Listen to what he says right here. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Now there was a certain man in Ramoth Sosopham of the mountain of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroboam the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peninnah. Now Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Peninnah, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he would give a double portion. Here's kind of a problem here. For, the, for he loved Hannah, although, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival, how many of us have rivals today? And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Heavenly Father, take this word and anoint it today. Anoint it to your glory today. Anoint it to your power today. For Lord, it's time to eat. It's time to taste the Lord and see that he is good today. And that his mercy his mercy endures to all generations. For the Lord God Almighty, his arm is never too short to be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. Now lift us up today and let your word go forth today and let it not come back void, but let it accomplish the task it's been set to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. How, the title of the message is called My Contribution to the Lord. How many of us 
more. How many of us want to do have all want to do something in our life that's of value? We all want to do something in our life that's of value. We all want to do something in our homes that matters, that 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 makes a mark for us. That 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 no matter what happens in our life, we're we're working in our life to do something to achieve, to set a goal to achieve in our lives. That not only does it benefit us, not only does it does it show that we that we've exceeded the visions or the goals that we've been trying to do, but that also that it set a mark on us, that it's made that it's, that it's allowed to us. Everybody wants to make a contribution in some way or another, mothers of how they can not only bless their homes, but how also they can bless the world and how they can that how they can see themselves. It, it, how they can see themselves is successful in what they've been trying to do. And more than anything else, the most important, the most important contribution that a, woman, that a person can make is by doing something that's of value that blesses their home, that blesses their family, that shows that, Gina, that you have something to contribute to those that are around you so that your family can do it, that your family can prosper, your family can be blessed, your family, your family can overcome, your family can, your family can, um, can uh, succeed in life, and that it, it's, and you feel like that you, as, as, a, as a wife and as a mother, that you, you've done something in your home to make sure that not only your husband, whom you, is lifted up, not only your children lifted up, but that those in the world see you as what the Bible, I think it talks about in Proverbs 31 around verse, is it Proverbs 31? Proverbs, is it Proverbs 6, 31? That a woman, that a woman is more valuable than a ruby. A, a woman of great price is more valuable than a ruby. That she works all night to, to take care of her family. And then she is lifted up. And then she is, as her husband and her children stand before the gates, they lift her up before the men because they're so proud. Nothing, nothing makes a man more proud than, than to be willing to what? To willing to know that he has a woman, a righteous woman, a righteous mother that what? That all other men envy and talk about and desire to have. I always remember that, Austin. When you find, when you find someone, find a, the find a godly, godly woman. The Bible says... That a, that a man who finds a good woman has found a great thing. Every, behind every good man is, is, what, is a great woman. And so, so, so here, no, most of us are sitting here, most women, the most important contribution that we can give, people say, what is, well, well, the most important contribution I can give is what? Is to, to go to work? Is go to, to contribute to the household, to the finance, to, to, to create a, you know, a 401k to have us a future so we can have a retirement, Donna, and all that. We can have, we can have a good home, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, uh, and uh, we can walk into the house, and every time we walk in there, you know, there's plenty of food on the table, and the bills are all paid. And, and everybody goes, oh, well, you know, that's just part of my duties. You're right. That's, all, that's, just, that's just part of your duties, and that's part of the man's duties. Of the Bible says a man who cannot take care of his family is worse than what? Worse than an infidel. But the greatest contribution, the greatest contribution that, that, that most women can give to a man is what? Is to give him children. You say, well, well Hannah, here, Hannah, Hannah and I had many children and Hannah didn't have any. Well, she just wanted to have a child. No, it's more than that. See, the, the Eastern world thinks a whole lot differently than you and I do. See, most of us think that, that, that a sign, the sign of success is all the accolades, all the things that you have, the homes, the, 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 the bank accounts, the 401Ks, the, the cars, uh, all the, the clothing, everything you have in life. But you see, the greatest asset that a man can have is what is his seed. It's his, and the, that's, the, that's his generations to come. Why? Because... There is no, there is, there is no memory of man of a man unless he has a face to put with it. There is no memory of a man's life. There is no success in a man's life unless he has children to carry on that generation for him. 
and, and, and it, for, for daughters to be given away into marriage and for sons to carry on his bloodline. And see, that was the greatest, that's the greatest wealth of all that there is, is for you to be able to have not only children, but, and, and not only daughters to be given in marriage, but sons. And sons so that you can what? Sons so that, you're, so that when you're gone, people can, have, people can remember who you are because they see, they see the, the, the very impression of who you are in your son and in your daughter. You ever had to, people say that about me and Stacy all the time? Man, Daniel, man, Daniel, you look more and more like your mother every day. Our man, Kenneth, you, you, you look just like you. They, they were saying the other day, when, since I lost weight, they said, man, they, they, we went over to my wife's uh, family's house. They said, oh, you look like Kenneth now. I said, shouldn't you be saying that my, that my son looks like me now? But it, it was funny. It was okay to say that. But, but the point is, is nothing, you can have all the wealth in the world, but when you're gone, everybody forgets about it. Everybody forgets what it's, everybody forgets what you made. And what you did in life. I always say when I do a funeral, there's only two things that, that people remember. And there's, and there's only two types of people that are there. They, re they remember two things about were you a good person or were you a bad person. That's the two things they remember. Were you a person everybody that people get along with? And that everybody, they, they, don't, they, don't, they didn't look at your bank account. They, they knew that. Most people don't, well, I'm not going to get any of that. So I, really, I don't really pay any attention to that. They, they pay attention to what kind of characteristics, what kind of life you have. And then they turn around also and they look at your they look at your kids. And they look at your grandkids. And they see how they turned out. They see what they they, they, they see what life they live. And that's who's there and that's who's there. At every funeral, it's always your loved ones. It's always your loved ones and it's always God. And those are the two people who are at every funeral that I've ever done in 35 years. They're, they're always, I mean there's friends there. Some there's friends too. But the ones that count. The ones that count that are gonna, the ones that weep, that remember you, those are the ones who have the greatest memories of all because they're attached to you. They're a part of you. And so here, here we are, we're all we're a lot like Hannah. A lot of us like Hannah, a lot of us have we, we look around us and, and we, we see a lot of Penanas in our lives. Penanah was having babies like popcorn, man. <laughs> they will had no trouble at all. They just popping out everywhere, man. And, and Hannah couldn't even have one. You see, well, why was that important? Because Hannah wanted to make a contribution. When you got a not, when when you got a righteous, you can look at Elkanah was a righteous. You can already tell he's a righteous man because every year he went up to he went up to Shiloh to worship God. And he took he took his wives and his children with him, and he always worshipped the Lord. And he, but and, and you know what? And he always took care of them. They always got their portions. They always got what they were supposed to get. So you want to feel like in life, it's not just about mothers. You want to feel like in your life that you have some kind of some value. You want to feel like that, 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 that somewhere along the line that you contribute, that somewhere along, that you're successful, not just as successful as so everybody can see, but that, you're, that, that, you actually, that you actually did your part in the home or you did your part on the earth. Everybody said, man, that guy said, that guy said, that guy, or that guy, that girl, they, they, they set a path. Everybody can walk. When I said that the other day, when I was praying, I said, I told the, the mothers over at Stacy's uh, um, aunt's house, I said, always remember, always remember, when you take steps, there's, uh, when, when you leave a footprint, there's always a little foot behind you that always steps in that footprint that you left. So, so it, it matters. It matters that you're able to have this contribution in your life that you can that you can have these little footprints behind you that you can train that you can that you can give a part of you and share a part of your life that you hope when they grow up Bible says train up a child have in the ways of the Lord and when they grow old they will not depart that you hope when they get older that they're what that they're not only not only do they seek God even more than you did but that, but you always hope that they're what they're more successful than you you always want to see. You always want to see those, your offspring, those who came from you. You want to see them do much better than you did. That's that's your contribution to the world to do what? Matter of fact, it's actually it's actually by design. It's actually by God's design of creation. That's the first thing He told Noah and and his wife and Noah's sons and and their wives. He said, "Go forth in the earth and do what? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth." That's contribution. 
We're, we're living in a world right now where they're actually trying to depopulate. It's actually going, I would say how I feel, Lord. It's actually going against like the laws of nature and the laws of creation of God. That, they, that if you get, if, if you remove, if you remove that which is fruitful, and that oh, listen to this, David. If you move that which people have, the contribution that people have made on this earth, then you have no memory. Do you have no memory of what it's like to prosper? You have no memory of what it's like to be successful, to, to see value. You lose the most important attributes in your life. You lose the things that are, that are the, most, the, the most important things of all. And that is, that is the, the ability to have what? Hope. Hope made that it's not a shame. When you see people prospering and you see people contributing and you see people uh, gaining ground and get value and you see people, um, what's the right word, Holy Spirit? You see people uh, being successful and having purpose in their life, then that makes others want to have the same thing. That makes others want to have that stuff. Reach that same achievement, that same goal, that same, that's, that's what I was trying to look for. Reach that same mark in their lives. Everybody wants to reach a, a certain mark in your life where you where you feel like you've done something. And then you look around at the Pentanos and you see it, it's, everything seems like it's going easy. It seems like everything's, that, that, that everything's always easy for them and they're always getting by and, it's, and, it, and it seems like they, they have no... Uh, no inferiorities inside. No, no, no downsides to them. But they do. Everybody does. Everybody does. And you think, man, Lord, if I could just have just one, that's all Hannah will say. If I could have just one of what she has, Lord, I would, I would, I would bless you. Why does she want to do so? Because she wanted to make a contribution to her home. She wanted to bless Elkanah. See, and 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 that's. And, and the children uh, in, a, in, a, in a Jewish home, they were like money. That was their seed. That was the, his future. His greatest money was not all his assets, his land and his camels and his, and his goats and his donkeys and, 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 and cows. His assets were his children. Because that's what carried on his generation. That's what, see, that's what carried on his name. And so you look, and you look, so you look, and, and Elk and I, Elk and I kind of did something, you know, that, uh, that, you know, you always run the risk if you got, ain't nothing like a woman's scorn. The Bible says that a woman's anger is, 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 is better for you to be, uh, Solomon, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's a thousand women around you all the time, man. What's wrong, what was wrong with that man? Good, now I had 11. They said one woman's just bad, it's, just, it's like having a, up and acting like a woman with a dripping faucet up in down inside, the, it's better to be up in the attic and listen there like a dripping faucet down inside the kitchen. That's what that's what Solomon said. Yeah, he never learned it. He never learned out of it though. He never learned from his mistakes. He he, he drew from their astral poles and did that and was a part of their their pagan worships. He was a part of the part of Baal where they sacrificed the most important thing. One of the most important. I, I'm not I'm not listening. I'm not limiting women. In, women is part. They're not the most important thing. But know this. Women are five to one men on the face of the earth. It's always that way. It's always been that way. So praise God for women and mothers. What would we do without mothers? But you need that one little old guy every once in a while that's in order to, in order to uh, fulfill that future, that generation. But here they are. That was kind of silly what they've done. But that, that here, here, here's Solomon. He's, they're offering up male children as sacrifice on the altar of Baal. Instead of seeing it as a contribution. And here's Hannah saying, I just want to give one. I just want to do one. And one of the things that the elk and I did, I mean, he was a righteous man. And he gave the he gave he gave Pen and all her portions. He gave her what she was supposed to get, and he gave it to all of her all of his sons and daughters. But he was also a respecter of persons that, you know, it's kind of his fault what was going on with uh, what was going on with Hannah. Because <laughs> he gave Hannah a double portion. Now, everybody know what was going on. Everybody said, well, hey, wait a minute. He's kind of showing respect to persons over there. You know, and you want to make a woman mad? You see, she said, man, look at me. I've, I've got to give him sons and daughters right and left. 
And yet he doesn't hear, well, who am I? What am I? Chopped liver sitting over here. He doesn't care anything about me. That's what she was thinking. And so she provoked her. You, you, oh, you think he loves you? He just feels sorry for you. Because you can't have no kid. You can't, you can't even have, we didn't even have one look at you. Every year after year after year, we come up here. And you still the same. You still just have, you have one kid, you have one child. And, and she, she provoked her to no end. And, 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 and what is the Lord saying? And, it's, and it's, she said, Hannah, would, and Hannah wept bitterly, and Hannah would not eat. And I tell you that, it's time to eat. It's time to eat. It's time to eat. What, if, what was the one thing that Hannah did that I want, I want to ask you all if you're willing to do before I get to that? I mean, sometimes men are stupid, you know it. They really, we really are. We say, we say that dumb things, Dave. Sometimes we just, we, we say stuff, we, we say things that, that we know what's wrong, and, but, but it made it worse, see? Because he was better to her. Than, he was better to her than ten, ten, than ten sons. Elkanah sees Hannah weeping bitterly. Well, you know what's wrong? You, you, she, she, she's, never, she's never given you a child. She hasn't contributed and you made it known that you love her and you have favor with her. Now you're going to walk over to her while she's weeping and she's, she won't eat. Every year you go, to, every year after year they go up to, the, to Shiloh to worship and to make an offering. Well, she has nothing to contribute. You want to have the, you want to, you know, as a, as a man, no, well, honey, why are you weeping? That's what he says right here in verse 8. He said, why are you weeping? Why do you not eat? Well, you ding dong. Why don't you shut up? Am I not better to am I not better to you than ten sons? Why yes, that makes it even worse. I just want to give you one, and yes, you're better than me. Yes, you're better than me than ten sons. That makes it even more prevalent that I want to produce. I want I want to I want to be worthwhile. You ever like when somebody gives the old battle but gives you one for the Gipper story and they just want to encourage you and all that <laughs> and tell you. Just come on, we just press on together. And the, the very things they say just make it make you even think more about more about that make you feel more, more worthless than you were before. That how you're not actually actually contributing and, 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 and making the mark of the value that you want to do in your house or in the world. What well, course, of course, Elka and I, she's weeping because she because she hasn't given you a son. But you know, it took all that, y'all. It took all that. For God to finally bring her to a place, finally bring her to a place that she got desperate. Sometimes you just, you know, some it, now some people God knows how far He can take. Some people He knows that God He knows that they'll He'll take them all the way to the end, and then the they're the they're the people that just don't have any quit in them. They'll keep fighting, they'll keep fighting, they'll keep fighting until finally, and finally they'll just you know, finally they'll do they'll do the most important thing. You know what? They'll, they'll let go of themselves. They, they, they get to the place they just let go of themselves, and and and, and they're so willing. You say, I wonder if y'all are willing to do this. Listen to what it says about Hannah, in verse ten. And it says, and now she was bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord, and she wept in anguish. Verse eleven. Then she made a vow and she said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid, she saw this. So many women in this world can, can have, that, that have had so many children, they could care less. My wife and I, and I should, but it's true. I know women that, that, that have given their kids away. That's the truth. They've given them away. But here she just, she just wants one, one male child. And she's reached to a point, the affliction's so great. She says, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your maidservant, remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. I just want to have a generation, a bloodline, that I can carry on in Elkanah, and that, that he can be remembered and that our bloodline can be remembered for years to come. Now, I want to tell you, I'll go ahead and give you a nugget in the end. She honors God right here in this. She has five more kids after this. She has three more sons in, in chapter 2. She has three sons and two daughters after this. She didn't just have one child. She ends up having six all together. But because she honors the Lord, she said, "If you just give me one child, male child, I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, 
and no razor shall come upon his head. Now she's going up in, she's going up in, um, in the temple, and Eli's sitting there. And I don't know if you remember when we read just in the beginning that it said Hophni, Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas were there. Well, here's two sons that were wicked. Here's two guys that are supposed to be high priests. They're bringing prostitutes inside the, the, uh, inside the temple. And they're bringing strange fire up in there. And they're getting drunk. And, and Eli knows it. He's warning them. He's telling them. And, but yet Eli has been so long. And you, when, he walked, when you walk right up to him, he, the Bible says he's sitting on a stool at the doorway of the temple. That means he's, that means, that means his spiritual man has, has gone out of him. He, he's, in his, he's completely in his flesh. It's been a long time since he's actually drank of the presence of God and been the presence of God. So he's just kind of going through the motions and winding his way out. And he's allowed his sons to destroy uh, the integrity of the house of God. And so because of that, God is angry. Actually, it says in the end that, that when Hophni and Phinehas both get killed in the war and the, the Ark of Covenant is taken away, and one of the, his, uh, Phinehas' wife has a child and she dies in childbirth, and they said, well, oh, he's got another seed. So they talk about another seed. They're big about another seed, another generation. She said, oh, no. She said, this is, this is where the term Ichabod comes from. She, said that the, she called it Ichabod. The Lord has left this place. And did you know to this day, God, God used Samuel, who's the one that's going to be born from, uh, from Hannah. Hannah's, Hannah's, I'll, I'll come back to that. No, I'll go ahead and tell you that, and I'll finish talking about Hannah. But it said that, that Samuel was anointed as a young, as a young boy. Austin, he's only about 10, 12 years old. He's anointed to, tell, to prophesy to Eli, to tell him that none of your children from this day forward will have hoary heads. That means none of them will be gray-headed. None of them will get my age, y'all. They'll all die before they ever get to the age of, they'll, they'll die in the age of their, their, their flower, when in their youth, in their 20s. They'll never get gray-headed. They'll all die young. You'll, you'll never have anybody to remember. So, so here's what's going on in the house of God right now. And then you got a righteous man, Elkanah, taking Hannah, his wife, and Peninnah up there. So Hannah does what? Hannah says, you know what? God, I wonder if, how many of y'all are willing to do this. It doesn't even have to be a mother wanting a child here who's listening to me today. It could be anybody. It could be a man, somebody who's been looking to do something in your life for 20 years, looking for God to fulfill a vision or a goal or, or a, a contribution in your home. And I just wonder, how desperate are we to see God move in our lives? Well, Hannah was so desperate, y'all. You know what she said? She said, God, if, she said, listen, listen, listen. I don't even have to keep him. All I, you just let me have him. You just let me have a male child and just let me see him. Just let me be a part of it. Just let me see. Could you imagine I'm going to have my only child as a woman? As far as you know right then? And, and, and I'm going to, and you just let me have it, and I'll, I'll lend him back to you, Lord. I'll give him to you, and, 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 and not a razor. That she's, she's praying the Nazarite prayer. Not a, not a razor to shave his head. Well, that means, that was like Samson. Not shaving the head of a Jewish child is, like, is the sign of sanctification. A child being purified, sanctified, set apart unto the Lord. I, he's, he, he'll be given to you all the days of your life if you just let me have it. So, so she makes a vow. If you, just let, if you just let me be a part of him, I'll give him back. I'll just lend him back to you. So first of all, you got to be willing to whatever you want God to do for you. When you're seeking him, you got to be willing to, to, to give it to him. Give, that doesn't mean that everything's going to be like Hannah's, that it's going to say that he's going to he's take, take him from you, and you'll never sit to this. I mean, she saw him. She went up yearly and made him a coat every year, made him a robe and went up. But, but, she, was, but she was determined that she was going to be blessed with a male child, a son, to give to Elkanah, because Elkanah was a righteous man. And she was going to give him away to the Lord all the days of his life. Now, the other thing is, she had become so desperate. She had become so If you want God to do something, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you, God's not going to answer somebody's prayer, Donna, if all they do is just think about it in their mind. If you just say, man, I wish God would do this for me. Man, if I've been trying all my life to get God to do this and do that. I just wish He would help me. He never, you know, He never has come through. Oh, okay, so long. No, it's got to get down inside your heart. I'm closing. It's got to get in your heart. 
it had, you have to wait till it gets in your heart. And so he says right here, y'all, it said as it happened, verse 12, see, then it happened, then God moved. See, you got to look at Eli. Eli, Eli was dead as far as spiritually, he was spiritually dead. And he didn't know what, but it, but it took Hannah praying until what? Until it got inside her heart. It said, then it happened, what? God noticed. God noticed. And he woke Eli up to come speak to him. He said, then it happened. <laughs> That's probably the last spiritual act that Eli ever did. And he said, then it happened, verse 12. As she continued praying that before the Lord, that Eli watched her mouth. See, her mouth was moving, but nothing was coming out. Why? Because she was so perplexed about it and so in anguish that it got all it had gotten down inside of her heart, and all she, all she was doing, it just she was just speaking inside of her heart in the temple of her heart to where God only God and God alone could hear it. But out of but that's what it says: out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When you speak from your heart, you tell the truth. See, and God heard the truth from her. And that's when he that's when he woke Eli up and made Eli go and answer her. So she, he goes over there and he thinks she's drunk. He thinks she's drunk and drunk with wine or strong drink. And so he goes over there and, and so Eli says to her in verse 14, How long will you be drunk? Put away the wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. She, with humility, y'all. With meekness and lowliness of heart. What I was talking to you about earlier. See, I'm all the way back around to that intercession before God. That spiritual, that reverential all of God. See, even they knew how to expect. They all knew that Eli's sons, hmm, they all, let me see that to right now, Lord. They all knew Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were wicked. They knew it. Everybody that went to that temple knew that that temple was corrupt. That's why it mentioned in that first part of that script, the scripture over here. And it says, when they went up to, the, when Elkanah, verse 7, said, when he went up to the, uh, to the uh, temple, it says, that Eli's sons, Hophni, oops, wrong, wrong one. Verse 3, said that when he went up there, two, Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were there as the priests. Everybody knew that place was wicked, all right? And so nobody hardly paid attention to it when they went up there and did offerings. They still went up there, but they knew, they knew that there was unscrupulous stuff going on. But all of a sudden, God comes and wakes him up. What, where was I going with that, Lord? This is what I want to tell you. Even though they knew that it was that the, the, his, his his boys were wicked, and they knew that, that that Eli didn't have a hold on them, you know what she still did, David? Something we don't do anymore in the body of Christ. She still held respect and high high esteem for his office. In the office, she said, "In this, she said, she said, oh no, Lord." She said, "I'm not." So let's see. He said, "Put away thy wine and, drunk, and be drunk." She said, "No, my Lord." Verse fifteen. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have not drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. But do not consider thy mason servant wicked. She wasn't considering whether his sons were wicked for what they were doing. She said, do not consider me to be wicked. There was a sign of reverential all and respect. Even though, the, even, though, even though that temple was corrupt, they still said she still had respect for them. That was something that was taught. That we don't that we don't follow hardly anymore. She said, "Do not consider thy ways that they may serve a wicked woman. For out of the abundance of my complaint and my grief, I have spoken until now." So he had spoke a word until now, but now it was coming out. And so when he realized that she was, see, God woke him up, woke him up for one more time, one more, one more use out of him, Stacy. And so when he woke him up, he, she said, he said, and, and you know his word was good. So he says, then Eli answered and said, go in peace. See, he still had that right. God still had to, still anointed him for this time. Go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you the petition, petition that you've asked. She knew that she had gotten hold of God because the man of God came up and spoke even though he was dead in the spirit before he walked up. God woke him up just enough to bring him over. And it said about her, verse 18, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the women, listen to this, hope everything changes now. Now all of a sudden there's hope. So the woman went away. Why? Because she was, she was brave enough to say, you know what, God? I, I, just, I just want to see this come to fruition. And I'll lend him to you. I'll give him to the, all the days of your life, his life, and he will be anointed and sanctified to you. All I want to do is just be a part of it. I just want to have a child. 
male child, and then you can have him once I wean you. And she so the Bible said when she went away, that she that the, the woman ate. Look, I told you it's time to eat. The woman ate, and her face was no longer sad. Her countenance was no longer mine. Because she because she prayed out of the abundance of her heart, Gina. And the Lord heard her and answered her prayer. And when her prayer was answered, she knew that now she could make a contribution both to her household and a contribution to the Lord. And the Bible says she went home, and I'll just go pretty quick. She went home and Elkanah knew her, and in the process of time, she conceived and bore a son. And she named him Samuel, saying what? Because I have asked, I have asked for him of the Lord, of the Lord. And then at the exact same time, Elkanah's getting ready to go up to the yearly, yearly offering feast to go up before the Lord in, in Shiloh, and he wants her to go. And you know what she says? I mean, she's and Elkanah's still a righteous man, and he's still, he's still telling. He, he, he agrees with her what she wants to do, but he, but he gives her some righteous words in the end, and she follows through with it. And so she said, "I will not go. I will not go until he is weaned from me. And then when I go, I will take him up." She was going to keep her back. How many people keep keep their word to God, what they say to him? When he, you know, everybody likes to get their prayers answered, right? Everybody likes to hear God meet their needs. But all of a sudden, it's almost every time some God meets their need, does, he does what he says he's going to do, and he answers their prayer. They go back and they do totally opposite of what they said they were going to do to him. See, God's looking for a generation that, that you, you say what you mean, and you mean what you say, and you follow through with it. And when it's, it's, as soon as she... Had the child, she told, she told her husband, she said, I'm not going back up there. I'm not going back up to worship until I wean him. And, then, and I, when I wean him, I'm going to take him down and I'm going to leave him forever to be unto the Lord because I made that promise to do so. And Elkanah is so sweet about it, man. He says, you know what? He said, you know what, honey? You do whatever you think's right. And I'll, fall, I'll, I'll, I'll abide with you because I know what you're praying. I know what you've been waiting on. But only do this. Y'all can read it later. So do this. He said, let the Lord establish his word in you. See, sometimes we, we, we think God wants to do something, and, and we, we make a desperate prayer a lot of times, and uh, it's, it's, God hears it, but it's not really what the, it's not really, the, the Bible says, and is, was it uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God with your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so you can hear God, so that you can do what? So that you can know what is the good, the perfect, and acceptable will of God. Sometimes we want the acceptable will, but God wants the perfect will in your life. And so that's what that's what Elk and I would say. Let God establish His word in you. This is what God wants, and that you know what that's what we're gonna do. And you know what she did? She took him up there, and she took three bulls up there, and a flask of wine, and she told Eli who she was, and and she said, "I'm here to leave him with you forever. <laughs> I'm here to leave." I, and I went back and checked it, you know, and I can understand why now. Now, she did in chapter 2. God remembered her, and she ended up having three more sons and two daughters because of that. But, but uh, Samuel only lived to be 52 years old. And I, and, and I thought, well, he was kind of young to, for God to take out of this world. But you know what? I, I realized why. Because, because 45, 40 plus 5, 45 plus years of his life, he was a minister. He, he started ministering, y'all, at seven years of age. Seven years of age, he prophesied to Eli and told him his judgment. And the Bible said none of his words fell from his mouth. So you figure, you know, after a, after a guy's been living 45 years, and that's all he's done was, was prophesied and ministered God's word. He was and one of the greatest prophets of the entire Bible. And God said, you know what, I'm going to take him on. He, he, he ain't going to be able to go another. And I mean, he probably did so like he did. You know, Moses didn't start preaching until he was 80. So that's 40 years, see? 40 years too. So what did God do with Moses? He took him and buried him himself. Why? Because God never, because because God never wants to let anybody else become the idol. He never wants to let anybody else be lifted up. He, he and he alone is the only one that can be exalted. So when it was time for Samuel to go, God took him on Himself. That's why. Amen. God bless you, mothers. Heavenly Father, I just lift you up today. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that Your Word is true. That Your Word will always go forth and. It Thank you, Holy Ghost, for, for anointing my, my, my thoughts and my mind today so that you would be lifted up. So we just magnify you and we glorify you in this place. We ask you, God, that, that you take it and that this is the, truly the year of jubilee. That, God, that we're going to see a peace in the land, a peace in our homes.
and the mothers that are listening to me today and, and, and many mothers that are there hearing on this video, they're going to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their homes. And, and there's going to be a, a great release of joy and peace and, a, and a, a release of prosperity inside of our homes in this year to come. And many women are going to go back to intercession. They're going to, they're going to receive hope. And they're going to go back to praying and seeking the face of God. That the glory of God will just overshadow us. And we will see a revival of souls and a revival of children. That's, that's what it says. That's what it says in Malachi. That the, that the fathers return back to the children. And that's you know, what it says, Stacy. And the children turn back to the Lord to make way for the coming of the Son of Man. There's got to be a revival of home. There's got to be a revival of families. And so we just lift you up and we give you all the glory and all the honor, all the praise in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. We thank you in advance that you hear us when we pray. Amen.